Well, it's a very, very exciting day for us. We've been, we've been hoping that this day would happen for a long time. Uh, it's never been certain. Um, it's partially thanks, or largely thanks, to Peter Turin's uh, steel nerves uh, that this is happening at all. And of course, Rand Merchant Bank, who's been right behind us, right from the, the get-go, uh, without whom nothing would happen. Um, and that's been a great pleasure. Um, but um, to tell the story of Wars would be to tell the story of the development of our puppets right from the beginning of the company from 1981, and I'm not going to bore you with, with, with uh, a, long, a long tale. But uh, suffice to say that the horses that emerged in the process of making War Horse didn't come from nowhere. Um, they came from years of uh, trial and error, years of slow development um, by Adrian, who is our, our artistic director and main puppet maker. Um, they, they came from a hyena uh, that moved into another puppet. But where I like to start today um, is with a giraffe um, in a play called Tall Horse, which was the play that preceded War Horse. Some of you may have seen it at, at the Dance Factory uh, in, in about 2004 um, when, when we did Tall Horse. It was a collaboration with a, a company from West Africa in Mali. Uh, and when, when some people in the National Theatre heard that we were doing a play about a giraffe, they came out to see it in Cape Town. It was a giraffe with two people inside. It was a, a life-size giraffe, probably as tall as the, the top of the screen. Um, and uh, we were very excited that the Royal National Theatre was sending their um, executive producer and one of their associate directors out to see the play especially. And we kind of assumed that they were going to uh, buy the play or hire the play or book the play. Yeah, we thought we were off to London with our giraffe and we were thrilled. And in, in a typical English fashion, after the show we met in the bar and they were very smiley and very polite and they offered to give us any assistance we might want on the script and then got on the plane and went home. <laughs> so that was very disappointing. And two months later I got a phone call from Tom Morris who had been in Cape Town. And Tom Morris was one of the assistant directors at the, at the National Theatre, um, newly arrived at the National Theatre, and someone who was expected to bring in new things to the National Theatre, introduce new talent to the National Theatre, and he'd worked with us before, um, he'd seen our work, and he, of course he'd come out to see Tall Horse, the giraffe piece, and he had a proposal. And over the phone he told me the story of War Horse very briefly, um, you know, the, the story about a, a boy from a dysfunctional family in, in South England um, whose father buys a horse by mistake at, at an auction and the, the boy brings the horse up and then the father sells it to the war and the boy runs off to find his horse. And um, the beautiful story, the, the, the great concept behind the novel of Michael Morpurgo is that the central character in the story of the war is a horse and the horse doesn't understand the Brits or the Germans. He doesn't understand the idea of people who are enemies. He simply exists in the world. And so he doesn't see the war, he, sees, he simply <coughs> sees kindness and other horses and, and, and makes do where he can. And, uh, it was a brilliant way of, of looking at war uh, in a dispassionate sense. So Adrian's first uh, response to Tom Morris was yes. Um, we, we'd done tall horse, uh, so we made this, this life-size giraffe. It seemed obvious that we could make a horse which is half the size of a life-size giraffe. Yeah, but as soon as, as uh, then when, when, when the novel arrived in the post, I realized, of course, that this horse would have to be ridden by actors, and it would have to take part in plowing and, and, uh, and, and cavalry charges of 180 horses or more, and we didn't know how the hell we were going to do that. So we started uh, with a workshop um, in London, which involved having a little bit of time on the huge uh, stage, the Olivia stage, which is the main stage of the Royal National Theatre in London. Very intimidating, but we had we had kind of hoods made out of cardboard, uh, which were the heads of the horses, and 
sort of swishy cut cardboard tails, and we pranced around, or we had people uh, uh, in the workshop prance around the, the stage in the lunch hour yeah, just to see stage, what it looked like. The stage looked absolutely perfect for the horses. Um, it, it was almost like a circus arena, and there was a lot of space for them to run around, and so it was perfect. We went back to Cape Town and started working out whether we could balance somebody between two backpacks between two actors. We put the, our, uh, our neighbor's teenage daughter on a plank between us, and she didn't fall off, and we knew that it was right there. Um, you have to understand that the, the weight of the person is, is up there, um, the, the, uh, and it rests there. So anything that the person up there does, um, twisting or moving uh, left or right, is really hard for people like me. Um, and uh, so there's got to be a lot of control. Yeah, with the giraffe, the giraffe had four legs because there were two guys with stilts on and, and, and but it very soon became clear that the horse would need eight legs. The, the manipulator's legs plus the legs of the horse. Now, I, I remember seeing a, a crowd of school kids that came when they were finally eventually rehearsing the play and I was desperate to know how many legs they saw when they saw the horse running around the room. And they said, oh, they've got a stupid question. Of course they had four legs. <laughs> so I was very happy with that. <laughs> and then later on, there was a, a little six-year-old who was going home after the show who said to her mother, um, Mummy, do you think the horses mind those people running along with it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, so uh, it took us 18 months to develop the, the show. Fortunately, their previous Christmas show was so successful they brought it back and it brought us a year uh, of time. First of all, we actually had to make a prototype horse. Um, yeah. And uh, as with anything with puppets, it takes much, much longer, usually about 10 or 12 times longer than you think it's going to take. Uh, we knew that the transport people to take the, the prototype to London were arriving on Monday morning. We worked through the entire weekend, I don't think we worked at all. And uh, towards Sunday evening, it became clear that, that walking the prototype around Cork Bay, where we lived, was not going to be on the cards. Mm -hmm. So we simply posed the horse with its legs out, and then we posed it with its legs in, and we posed it with one leg like that, and we made a kind of an animation, which we sent to the National Theatre saying, the horse works. Yeah. <laughs> but we arrived uh, to, to do a workshop with it, with a prototype horse, imagining that we'd have a chance to put it together and then test it out. Well before the workshop. Well before, but anyway, we arrived, there was a room for the 40 people and our box, and we had to unpack the box in front of everybody else. It was a little bit like all of you standing <laughs> at a box here. Um, and we yeah. had to just unpack the box, put the pieces of the horse together, anyway, and make it work. The, the box, the, the horse took a rider in that moment, and. Uh, Eventually, when the executive producer who'd come out to Cape Town to see the giraffe came to watch a rehearsal, I could feel his excitement. I could feel the green light go on um, when, when Joey grew up in front of his eyes. And so we went back to Cape Town, redesigned everything, um, and uh, shipped the whole lot to London for the first period of rehearsal. Now, uh, people say, did we know we had a hit on our hands at that point? And um, we absolutely didn't. Uh, when the show first opened to its first audiences at the National, which was running at three and a half hours long, and people were falling asleep. <laughs> and then we saw something remarkable happen. Uh, Nicholas Heitner, the artistic director of the National Theatre, came in and he said, well, uh, he watched the show and he, and he went to the directors of Warhols and he said, these, these are my cuts. And he cut an hour and a half out of the show. Um, and um, the, 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 the director said, well, we'll consider it. He said, no, no, you won't consider it. This is what you'll, this is what you'll cut. Um, and suddenly, audiences started weeping in the show. Audience started standing. Um, and some theater friends of ours who went and said, we've been in theater for a long time, but we think this is massive. Um, and and no, they said, we think you have massive hits on your hands. <laughs> and, and, and indeed, that's kind of what, what happened. It, the show um, was absolutely full at the National Theatre throughout its run, and then transferred very rapidly to the West End, um, and, and uh, then awards started happening. Um, there was one award where was yeah, we, the Ealing Standard... They had to fly in and the plane was delayed in Cape Town, and we only 
caught a taxi and we were shaving in the taxi and we got to the Putting award. on our ties in the taxi and there were people kind of running us into the awards and, and uh, Warhorse won uh, Best Play and, and a number of other awards including design awards for Handspring. Yeah, and then what happened after that, uh, the, the interest grew in the production. We, we were asked to make new sets of horses for other, other productions and, and we had to start a factory in Cape Town. The deadlines between productions got shorter and shorter. Eventually, what had taken us two years to make in the beginning, we had to make in six months, which meant that we had 20 people uh, beavering away, bending and binding cane and working on all the That things. was one of the really important things uh, for this production, for our company, for Handspring. We, we never really uh, been able to develop expertise in artisanship uh, around our puppet making. It was mainly reliant on Adrian's uh, expertise and the people around him were really just following what he, what he did. But with Warhorse, um, because there was suddenly a staff of 27 artisans, um, we, we developed, they brought skills with them and they developed skills during the making of, of uh, of all these shows, there were nine sets of puppets that we made all together over a period of four years. We saw this amazing artisanship growing and a real pride coming from them, knowing that the puppets that they were being, uh, that they were making in Cape Town were being used in New York and in London and in Berlin, um, all over the world, and getting fantastic feedback from people. Uh, the, the people in London who had to test the, uh, the puppets before they got used would say how well they were made, how, how much more beautiful uh, the new set of puppets just arriving was from the one before. All the, the components started getting made uh, outside of our company. Um, a lot of the work got digitized so we didn't have to cut every single piece out. Uh, it was a big um, transformation of the way we make puppets that, that happened and something that I, I, I deeply treasure that came out of Warhols that has affect in South Africa. And some of those artisans have written their own plays in Cape Town and are, are, are busy working on them. A lot of the puppeteers who first were in Warhols have developed their own plays in London. So we have seen a kind of an energy growing out of the production, uh, which is incredibly gratifying. And uh, we are, of course, absolutely thrilled that finally the show is coming here.